Hello, everyone. Good day. How do you do? And we're excited about being with everyone again today. Yes, we are. Oh, you, you look so good on Monday. Yeah. <laughs> you look good on Sunday, too. Yeah. I just, oh, also, boy, I love doing the uh, uh, Veterans Day, showing the things. You and yeah. Carver always yeah. wants to catch my attention. Yeah, we were, we, were just we were young, weren't we? We <laughs> were young. Such a beautiful couple. Still are. Still Thank are. You. Uh, but, uh, that was a great day yesterday, and but here we are again. We're yes, we in 1 are. First Samuel chapter nineteen. Yes, we are. And we're looking at this relationship of Saul, King David. Yeah, Saul's not a happy camper. He's no. uh, uh, he's he's depressed and he's angry and uh, he's becoming isolated. And uh, hey, are you just describing a lot of Christians today? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You know, again, that is amazing to me how the Old Testament can teach. We, we think the Old Testament doesn't have anything to say to us because it's just old. Yeah. It does. It's yeah. always current. God's Word is always current. So I'm looking forward to getting into this. So we label this Saul Tries Again. Saul Tries Again, yep. Yeah. And again and again and again to get rid of David. Yeah, and <laughs> it begins a long story of, of this. And the harder he tries, the behinder he gets. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll pray and we'll get started. Okay. Father, thank you for today. Thank you for the good things that you provided for us yesterday. And you watch over us every day. And your word is a, a light that that shines in the darkness it is a pathway for our feet to walk upon and i just pray that we'll just uh, wrestle and understand comprehend the good news for, that comes to us from this passage this week in christ's name we pray amen amen all right well, let's just jump right into it then saul now urged his servants and his son jonathan to assassinate david now just stop right there right, for a minute. Yeah. <laughs> now that's that's a good kingly order, right? Yeah. A good order from a God spiritual, spiritual man. man. Yeah. <laughs> Would somebody just kill this guy? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, get rid of him. Man, but this becomes an official Yes, it does. Uh, yeah. Part of the, you know, what do they call it? Uh, we just got through an election. The party's base or their platform. Platform, yeah. Uh, Saul's platform is David's got to go. David's got to go, Somebody yeah. needs to assassinate him. Wow. Yeah. However, Jonathan, because of his strong affection for David, and we looked at that last week, Jonathan loved David. He was committed to David. Mm -hmm. He recognized that the Spirit of God was upon David. Yeah that God was choosing him over his father. In fact, even choosing him over himself because Jonathan could have been the next one in line. Right. Wow. Right. He, he, he should uh, have been the heir apparent to the throne. Yeah. I mean, yeah. That, that's the way it, it's supposed to work. I'm preaching this week on the God of the unexpected. Yeah. God is always doing the unexpected. He doesn't yeah. always work the way we think. He's, we got him in a box. We got him figured out. Now this is the way God always works. <laughs> he always does. I had a professor in college. who called him the God of the Serendipity. Yeah. The Serendipity God. That's a big word. Yes, it is. <laughs> but just when you think, just when you think God's not here, he opens the curtain and peeks out and says, "Yeah, yeah." yeah. The Wizard of Oz. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Great. Okay. <clears throat> so let me go back to. Jonathan, because of his strong affection for David, told him what his father was planning. Oh, wow. Tomorrow morning, he warned him, you must find a hiding place out in the fields. I'll ask my father to go out there with me and I'll talk to him about you. Then I'll tell him, I'll tell you everything that I can find out. Yeah. Um, so, 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 I mean, Jonathan and David's going to have a clearer picture after this event takes place. Yeah, I wonder what's going on in Jonathan's mind. I mean, I know his, his relationship with David, and uh, he he recognized David, but uh, I wonder what he thinks about his father. He seems to... Oh, yeah. Yeah, he seems to uh, have distanced himself. Even, even in the battle with the Philistines a long time ago, he distanced himself, distances himself from his father and, yeah. and attacks the outpost by himself, you know. Yeah. So his, he, he doesn't seem to have a lot of respect for his father at this point. Yeah. Well, I mean, if I found out that my father made a foolish pledge, that, you know, yeah. I, I'm the one that came out the 
not the winner, but the mm-hmm. person, you know, when he put his little staff in that little bit of honey, uh-huh. tasted it. Yeah, I can, I can see that, understand what you're saying there. Okay, the next morning, Jonathan spoke with his father about David and saying many good things about him, which means Saul's going to get angrier, angrier and, and angrier, angrier and angrier. angrier. The king must not sin against his servant David, Jonathan said. He's never done anything to harm you. In fact, he killed the big giant. You remember Goliath? He has always helped you in any way that he could. David is innocent in this this situation. Mm -hmm. Have you forgotten about the time he risked his life to kill that Philistine giant and how the Lord brought you or brought a great victory to all of Israel as a result? You were certainly happy about it then. Why should you murder an innocent man like David? There's no reason for it at all. Yeah. You know, the scriptures do it here. Really what the scripture does for Jesus in uh, his relationship with Pilate. The the story makes it clear he's innocent. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what Jonathan is doing here. He's making it clear David's done no wrong. Yeah, David's not done anything to you. Yeah, yeah, the suffering, and yet there's some overtone here, you know, of the suffering Messiah. David is going to be king, but before he's king, he's going to go through some suffering. Yeah. Wow. Uh, this is why I love Scripture. Again, I don't have all these thoughts just walking around. We come in here and sit down, we start talking Talk about, about it. it. Yeah. And then I go, man, I can preach this now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, I, I just love God's Word, how it comes alive. So... Saul listened to Jonathan and vowed, as surely as the Lord lives, David will not be killed. Yeah. Now, that should be written in stone if a king is saying it. Yeah, but it's a vow that he's not going to keep. And again, something else jumps in my mind here. You know the, the story of Esther and the Old Testament we're studying in Sunday school? Mm-hmm. That is one of the longest drawn out, you talk about long drawn out stories. Yeah. You know, how did, I've always struggled with how to preach through Esther. So yeah. therefore I have it preached through Esther because there's so much story and content. And But one of the dumbest things is the rule of the Persians that if a king puts something in writing, it can't be changed. Yeah. It, it just can't be changed. <laughs> and so when you, they do dumb things, it can't be changed. You know, the king signs off for the death of all the Jews, even though he's been tricked in it, because he, you think a good king should be able to say, I did something wrong. It was stupid. Yeah. Okay. Well, you, you but if you're, think this if, here, if you're thought of as a God, a representative of, of God, though, you can't yeah. go back on your word. Well, yeah. I know, but that's yeah. the God of serendipity. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that's the God of the unexpected. Yeah. Even as, you know, the theme that I'm preaching through Hebrews, you had the tabernacle, you had the temple, but yet God's going to raise up another completely priesthood of Melchizedek. Mm-hmm. He's always doing the unexpected, yeah. and, and, and that throws us off. Well, I think Jonathan is, is hearing what his father is saying and wants to accept it. Mm-hmm. And of course, you and I know the rest of the story. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah Jonathan's going to believe it, at least temporarily. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So afterward, Jonathan called David in and told him what had happened. And then he brought David to Saul. And David served in the court as before. Yeah. Oh. Everything's cool. Everything. We're, all, we're all good here. Wow. Beautiful music. Yeah. Wow. However, war broke out again after that. And David led his troops against the Philistines. He attacked them with such fury that they all ran away. But one day when Saul was sitting at home, and they're probably singing that song again, Saul has killed his thousands and David David his tens of thousands. He's sitting at home one day. You know. He should have been out there on the battlefield. That's exactly right. Yeah. David's going to make that same mistake with yeah. Bathsheba. Yeah, he is. Yeah. But Saul should have been out there on the battlefield with him, but he wasn't. Yeah. He was sitting at home brooding. Yeah, with his spear in hand. And that tormenting spirit from the Lord suddenly came upon him again. And as David played his harp, and usually that soothed things, but this time it didn't. It irritated Saul. Yeah. And you just have to picture this. Saul hurled his spear at David. But David dodged out of the way, and leaving the, sp- 
the spear stuck in the wall, he fled and escaped into the night. Yeah. Wow. Nothing happens good in the night, though. Uh, even though David... Well, again, well, I, I can't help it when these things jump in my mind. You know, I do this. I'm, yeah. I'm thinking of Judas Iscariot when he walked, left the upper room. It says he, he went into the night. Yeah. I never have tied that with David going into the night. I yeah. know it's two kind of different things. But yet, um, wow, David yeah. don't know what to do here. No, he doesn't because he, uh, he's Saul just vowed that he's going to be okay, and then he just threw a spear at him. Yeah. So. You know, these should have been days of light because the children of Israel are winning the battles. The people, you know, um, I, I, I think are basically supporting him, but he just can't get over this one little yeah. thing here. Yeah, and, and uh, it, say, it says repeatedly that a spirit from the Lord came on Saul, et cetera. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we, would, we would want to psychoanalyze Saul. Something right. something's not right here with a his situation. yeah he's got a mental situation going right. so uh, maybe maybe you can't separate the two quite as cleanly as we would like to oh that is a great statement yeah yeah, yeah you, you, I've been around those situations I think I've told you the situation where I walked into at my first pastorate and uh, oh, you know lady's just laying on the floor and she's just spewing. Old Testament and Book of Revelation mm -hmm. passages, but she's just out of it, and I'm going. I don't know what to do here. <laughs> I didn't know. Yeah, I was ready to run out the door into the night. <laughs> yeah, but uh, so yeah, you know. But she, they took her to a psych ward. But was it that? I really don't know the end how that story all ended. But mm -hmm. uh, it's. But that was a great statement that you made there. Yeah. Sometimes we can't tell the difference between the two. Yeah. Is this God perhaps trying to catch our attention, or is, are you mentally unstable? Yeah. Wow. That's good. Then Saul <clears throat> sent troops to watch David's house. And they were told to kill him. And when he came out the next morning, or kill him when he comes out the next morning, but Michael, David's wife, warned him. If you don't escape tonight, you will be dead by morning. Yeah. And there's all kind of stuff here. Again, my mind's jumping again to Samson. Kind of did. You know, we're going to kill Samson in the morning. Yeah. And when he comes out, you know, he tears the gates and carries them up the hill. And David's being warned that he's going to be killed the next morning if he yeah. don't get out of there that night. Yeah. And yet, Michael, who looks like she's for him, is going to turn against him. Yeah. This story is just... It, it, it just it's a real soap opera. <laughs> it really is. The days of our life. <laughs> <laughs> We're looking for the guiding light. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> oh, man. What intrigue yeah. that we have going on here. All right, let's see what happens. So she helped him climb out through a window. He fled and escaped. And again, now my mind jumps to Saul going out the window. I mean, the apostle Paul going out the window, who was Saul, turned into Paul going out the window in the yeah. middle of the night when they're fisting to persecute him. Yeah. My brain is, you see, it's just in overdrive today. I don't know why. Wow. Intrigue. Intrigue. <laughs> and now the next verse catches your attention, too. Okay. Yeah, look at this. Then she took an idol, put it in his bed. Takes me back to Rachel, where she's sitting on the idols. Yeah. <laughs> Covered it with blankets and put a cushion of ghost hair on his head. Yeah. Now, see, idols are real, really gods. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You can manipulate them pretty easy. Mine says you. she took the household god. But yeah. Well, uh, yeah. Uh, the household idol. You yeah, know, I mean, you but Rachel. you got to wonder why, what's this doing in David's house? What's this doing in the. That's a good question. Yeah. Uh, they're not quite as uh, uh, sophisticated uh, spiritual or religiously as we like to give them credit for. That is a great insight. Never looked at it that way. Yeah. That is good. Why is there an idol in King David's house? Yeah. Yeah, all the idols should have been gone. Yeah. But sometimes idols are bad, but here's the good situation. <laughs> but it's... You know, that's, I was listening to something for a couple of weeks ago, and really in today's time, idols are kind of different things. We don't have the idols, but there are some people that do have the Buddhas and stuff sitting around yeah. and stuff. But 
uh, it always bothers me when I go in some home and I see a Buddha sitting there. And oh, it's yeah. The followers of Christ. Yeah. Uh, anyway. I used uh, to have one I used as a doorstop. <laughs> <laughs> about it. What uh, were you doing? Don't you see? They use an atom for a pop yeah, here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you want to go home now and clean out all your eyes. There you go. <laughs> oh, mercy. Well, uh, let's see what happens. So when the troops came to arrest David, she told, told them that he was sick and couldn't get out of bed. But Saul sent the troops back to get David, and he ordered, hey, bring him to me in his bed so that I can kill him. Yeah. We'll get rid of this guy tonight. I'm yeah. tired of this. Yeah. Wow. But when they came to carry David out, they discovered that it was only an idol in the bed with a cushion of goat's hair at his head. Yeah. I really do think the writer here is making fun of the idol situation. Yeah. Y- y- y'all all put this importance on idols, and they, they're just playthings. Yeah. Wow. Good stuff. Why have you betrayed me like this and let my enemy escape? Saul demanded of Michael. I had to. He threatened to kill me if, he, if I didn't help him. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah she's lying. She's lying. <laughs> she's lying her way out. Yeah. And, and it, it seems like they do this to this whole story, you know, it's, it's, it's just deception. Yeah. One after another. Everybody's walking around with knives in their back. Yeah. That's why, again, I was, you know, I, uh, your study Wednesday night was really good. And yeah, that whole story, the whole book of Genesis is just a chaotic story. Oh, yeah. And this, doing the same thing, it, it looks like things get... Things get so messed up that there's no way God can ever bring his purposes to fruition because we humans are always messing it up. Yeah. And I have a tendency to think that Christianity is that way today. Can be. Oh, yeah. there's just, this is what Christianity is. This is what Christianity is. No, you got to do this. No, you got to do that. And yet God is working. Always working. Yeah. Oh, man. Good stuff, ain't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. All right. Well, that's the one thing we try to do right here at Battlefield. We try to teach the Word, put it out there. So David escaped. He went to Ramah to see Samuel. And he told him all that Saul had done to him. And then, you know, because if I remember correctly, we heard earlier that Samuel never saw Saul again. until his funeral. Yeah, he never. Yeah. Okay. So this, but he was. God had already told, said to Samuel, you know, quit mourning over him. But it really broke his heart mm-hmm. that Saul wasn't working out. Yeah. Wow. Okay. You only can imagine what he's thinking. Oh yeah. I'm not surprised. Yeah. <laughs> he, he he still believes he's king when when Samuel knows David's going to be king because he had ordered him. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I get my brain's just racing today. Then Samuel took David with him to live at Naoth. Not sure where Naoth is. I don't yeah. either. It must be must be remote. <laughs> must be somewhere clear. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> close to Ramah. So when the report reached Saul that David was at Naoth in Ramah, he sent his troops to capture him. But when they arrived. And saw Samuel leading a group of prophets who were prophesying. The Spirit of God came upon Saul's men, and all of a sudden now they start prophesying. Wow. A bunch of Pentecostals. Yeah, really. <laughs> yeah. But uh, uh, yeah, they, they, they're, over, they're overcome by what they see with Samuel and the presence of Samuel, so they start. Uh, uh, Saul's not going to get his way. Yeah. God's spirit is all over Samuel, right? So that it falls even upon the enemy that comes, yeah. And uh, and like you say, Saul got all these S's names. Samuel Saul. All the Saul is supposed to have the spirit, but doesn't have the spirit. But doesn't the spirit's already left him? Yeah. Except for that tormenting spirit. Yeah. Okay. When Saul heard what had happened, he said, "I'm going there." He said, "Well, he sent other troops first. But they too prophesied. And the same thing happened a third time. Boy, when things happen in threes, you better watch out. Finally, Saul himself went to Ramah, arrived at the great well in Sukkot, 
Where are Samuel and David, he demanded. They are at Naoth and Rama, someone told him. Yeah. And I almost feel like, even though you, you think, surely not, that Saul is so fed up with David that he, he would even kill Samuel if he got in the way. Yeah. You feeling that? Yeah. Oh, wow. He'll do anything. Wow. However, on his way, the Spirit of God came upon Saul, and he too began to prophesy <laughs> all the way to Naoth. And I guess Pastor Richie would say, if God can speak through a donkey, <laughs> he can speak through yeah. uh, uh, Saul here. Yeah. Wow. Great passage. I'm, I'm just so he tore off his clothes. He lay naked on the ground all day and all night, prophesying in the presence of Samuel. The people who were watching exclaimed, What? Is even Saul a prophet? But here, here's uh, uh, an example of how powerful the Spirit can, how, how, how contagious it can be. Mm-hmm. I and, agree. Uh, um, even Saul, in his in his demented state and in his uh, spiritual, you know, despair, is mm-hmm. uh, overcome by the spirit. Yeah. So you'd think he'd catch on about now, right? I also think, you know, just as we made fun of the of the idol situation. Yeah. You ask yourself the question: Sky got a sense of humor? I almost think he has to say so. Yeah. Know, and I, I, I think he's really almost poking fun at, 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 at Saul. Yeah. And you, even though uh, I don't think David or Samuel would agree with us, um, it's like God is saying, you can do anything you want, but you ain't going to touch these two guys. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it's, it's interesting to see uh, how God does battle against Saul. In mm-hmm. a sense, Saul is Saul is using swords and spears and trying to kill, right. and God's response is the spirit, right? And uh, which is an interesting dynamic when you think about it. Yeah, and it's also a, a good emphasis, like you say, of the spirit working even through the Old Testament story. Yeah, he's a powerful influence. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right, I think I'm seeing that's our last verse for today. Yes, it is. All right. Well, we're going to come back next week. Continue this story. It, yeah. Chapter 20. It gets more interesting. It does get more, more interesting. More knives and more backs. <laughs> well, okay, we'll get in. Uh, I'll let you pray us out, but you can sum it up any way you want. Okay. We're just kind of hanging on a cliffhanger here. Yeah. <laughs> this is uh, another episode next week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sounds good. Pray us out. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this story and for the movement of the Spirit that uh, affected even Saul. We just ask that you uh, send us that Spirit, and may we uh, be contagious in our spiritual fervor, and may we be contagious in our uh, commitment to Christ. We thank you so much this day in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And we hope and pray that you are enjoying this journey with us. Yeah. It really does make the Scripture come alive. Thank you for your input. But thank you for watching. God See bless. You next week. Hey, Pastor David, as we come to this close of this session today, um, Thursday, your wife is going to be having uh, liver cancer uh, surgery. Yes. And, uh, and it's going to be a major surgery. She'll be in the ICU for about four or five days. Wow. So I just wanted to take a moment and pray for Carmen. Pray for you. I appreciate that. And um, we know the Lord is going to be with you. And and you already know the people at Battlefield love you very much. Yeah. And I know people that watch it in with the Bible Study Podcast also can be praying for a, a successful surgery, quick recovery, and for God's touch upon Carmen okay. in a very special way. So appreciate it. Okay. Right. Father, I thank you for your amazing love. I thank you for... Carmen, her her life, her spirit, the way you have worked, you have just created in her a beautiful servant. And as she undergoes this surgery, we pray that the confidence of Christ will be right there with her, that she will sense your, your presence, your care, your touch. And we just pray that all will be well. 
And we want you to be with Pastor David and, and encourage him and, and hold him close to your heart as well. We love you, Lord, and we know you're going to be watching over this family in a very special way. We ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Thank right. you very much, Joe. You're welcome. And uh, you be praying as well. Yes, you do. Thank you.